of the rear group. That's quite clean. Often you'll find that it will come away with all manner of oils and grease on it, but that looks quite clean. The cotton bud's coming off quite clean. So I'll clean the glass on that now. I can see there's a smear over it on this side where the cotton bud I'd been using for cleaning the, the outside of this had contacted it. When you're cleaning glass like this, rotate your cotton bud so you're always presenting a new surface to the glass at all times. And that acts as a uh, insurance against picking up a particle of grip and grinding it into the lens. And here I've got the window light coming into my right, coming in from my right, so I can judge from reflections on the surface of that glass whether I've got it clean enough. Blow the dust off it and screw that into the rear of the shutter. I'm just using finger pressure there to tighten that up. I'm not using a tool on it at all. I could use a friction tool but there's no need to. I'm going to clean this outer surface of glass. You can go through a good number of cotton buds doing a job like this. But they're cheap enough. And that surface, of course, um, is likely ne not likely to be cleaned any time in the next decade. It's just tucked away handily inside the camera and will be left there. Right, here we have the centre group. And this will be more of a challenge getting the grease out of this. You can immediately see the filth coming out of here. That's just, that grease has just deteriorated over time. That's quite normal. The volatiles will have volatilized and gone away and left it dry and sticky. So I will clean this until I'm satisfied I've pretty much got all of the grease out of that thread. It's looking pretty good now. And I'm looking at that face round in here to make sure that that's relatively clean. And that looks good. So that to one side, let's have a look at this front group. And again I'm just wanting to clean off any grease from the out. This, it's just, um, I'm particularly careful on that face to try and keep it away from the glass if I can because Otherwise, 
I'll have to spend a lot more time cleaning the glass. Someone's been quite generous with the grease here. Generally speaking, you do not need much grease in a lens helical. If the threads are quite fine, any grease at all will make the action quite stiff. If the threads are coarse and there's a lot of play in them, a wear or even original play from the just the tolerances of the manufacturing process then sometimes you might need a thicker grease to damp the action to fill up the voids and make it run smooth that looks pretty good I'll go around that once more and then I'll try the outer helical try the uh, outer lens group here, the front lens group in the centre group, lens group and see if that will run smoothly in the thread well it started easily enough there's a bit of a uh, a rough spot I can feel there. I'll put a drop of naphtha on there and work work that backwards and forwards. It may be that there's a rough spot on the metal there somewhere. It may be that there was a thread of cotton from the cleaning process that's been left in there. Uh, that little drop of naphtha just acts as a lubricant while I'm working these two surfaces together and uh, you probably saw they burnish each other rub down high spots that, that, that action is nice and smooth I'm happy with that and I can see a little bit of cotton there so that was probably our, our problem. I can see just a tiny thread of cotton here. I'll see if I can lift that out with the tweezers. It's not uncommon for tiny threads of cotton to come off. Cotton buds, of course. It's, it is the nuisance. The liability of using, using them for cleaning is that they'll likely to leave threads behind I've seen it suggested that you could use paper instead of cleaning because the fibres are easier to blow away oh, it might be a goer, I think you'd be creating lots of fibres ok well that moves smoothly I'm checking very closely to make sure there are no threads of cotton in there to cause me future grief. And now I can clean the glass on those two pieces. I'll start with the centre group. I'm doing the inside surface of the centre group the surface that faces the shutter blades <laughs> blow any dust off and I'll just screw that into the lens the shutter body and again I'm doing that as tight as I can with my fingers, I'm not using any tools on that. Now to clean the inside surface of this 
glass here I should say the outer surface the surface facing the front and because I've got the window light coming in from my side here I can judge from the reflections on that glass how clean I've got it that's looking very good it's looking at a mark here in the mount um, it looks like an original machining mark something here yeah, like the milling tool got a little bit deep at that point it's been painted out but it's certainly visible it's nothing that a repairer has put in it's certainly a machining mark right at this point like somebody wiggled when they should have woggled with the uh, with the tool right so the front piece well I've got to clean the inside surface first see a couple of small dots on there that look to me like they were dropped dots of uh, naphtha and whatever contaminant it was holding that's possibly from when I put a drop of naphtha on the threads to work them backwards and forwards and this particular glass I can tell from the look of that it's got a little bit of oil on it you can see those marks even in the camera that means it needs a more cleaning to get all these marks out. Now that's just a smear, it's an oily smear, it's uh, very likely it would have no effect at all on the image, but it looks ugly. Yeah, certainly. There's certainly some residual grease or oil around the edges of this. I'll try something. Now this lens components here, that looks to be all chemically blackened brass. So I shouldn't have any problems with this. I'm using that CRC Electroclean to clean the glass because it's good at cutting oil and grease away and I'm interested in getting it the glass clean particularly around the edges where obviously something is this must be some residual oils there if that was a painted edge I couldn't do this because the solvent would melt the paint and I would end up spreading the paint all over the glass instead. So it would be one step forward and two steps back. That's better. Just checking those marks to we'll see where they are. Sometimes it's difficult to judge which surface of the glass the marks are on. Well, that's much better. I'll give that one last wipe over and I think I can call that done. all the dust off that. 
put it in place on the shutter and I'll clean the outer surface of that lens now by cleaning the outer surface it means that I am better able to judge how well I had done it cleaning the inside surface as well if everything looks spot on after this I will be unscrewing the lens putting some helical grease on the threads and closing it up there's certainly something on that front part. That looks fine to me. I think that'll be good. What's that? Oh, that's good. Right, carry on. Some helical grease. Okay, well I'll take some of this helical grease. This is called Helimax XP Optical and Instrument Helical Grease. So you could get away with just about anything in this position. Just work that backwards and forwards a few times. That's fine. It's smooth. It's not overly loose. It's got a good feel to it. And that shutter is ready to go back on the camera body now. Because the closing up, the fitting of the focus scale ring and so forth is done after the focus is adjusted. Well I need to get the shutter back on the body now and there's not much to lining this up there's a, an alignment pin on the shutter and it drops nicely into place all I've got to do is watch to make sure that the shutter release lever here is on the correct side of everything that it's not uh, sitting behind something it should be in front of now if I close this front up slightly I should just about be able to get to the back of this. Right, I'll put something in front of that. That'll work. So I've got to get this in here. Get the lens back and the shutter back into here basically. I'll put a pad of paper on the front of that. And I'm doing that to hold the shutter back firmly against the body. 
firmly back in so that I can get that ring in place. Let's see if this will do the job. Yeah, no, it's sitting a bit cockeyed for my life. Oh, I might be able to get that. See if we can get this retainer ring started anyway. A uh, toothpick to help me manoeuvre that, I think. I can get the thread started everything's going to go fairly smoothly from there on in now I can't quite get that far enough back in there is that shutter still seated correctly? One of the things I've got to achieve here is to make sure that I get that ring underneath that last layer of the bellows, otherwise it'll pinch that, it won't tighten up properly. That's started. Okay, let's hook the bellows out from underneath it. Make sure that's not tucked under anywhere. That looks good. And see what we've achieved. Is that shutter fixed correctly? It is. Up is pointing up. Oh, that catch, that was the thing that was stopping us from opening it, wasn't it? Yeah, it's still a bloody nuisance, I've got to deal with that. Right, I'm just using a toothpick to push round my retaining ring here. That looks fine. Now, I think in this case I can use my tweezers. I've got a, quite a stiff pair of tweezers here and just rotate this into place that's good so I'm left with only one problem and that's this lever here it flops around. To really do a job on that, I would need to strip the leather, drill out all the rivets holding that plate in place on the door, rivet this back in place, and uh, reassemble everything. I don't think I can really do that. That's the sort of job that would eat up a day's time by the time I'd made rivets. You can certainly see, looking at the angle of this edge here, that that door's had some 
serious action at that point. Something has caused problems. I think that this must have been sitting like that and someone's forced the door shut and it's stressed things up. I'll try tapping that uh, rivet down, see if it makes any difference. I would be surprised if it does. What I'm hoping to do here is to bend down the edges of that rivet to make it bind on there more firmly. I'm trying to see if I'm achieving anything. I can't say that I am. The same again with a much finer punch I think and see if I can pinch down a tiny edge of that rivet to make it bind down tighter on that uh, plate. I'll be back if I have any success. Well using a very fine punch I've punched four dots onto that rivet head. That's crushed it down enough to the edges that this stays in place now. You can get it out with a bit of effort but it clips back into place. It's uh, not as good as it would have been originally, but it does mean that the front of the camera will open and close normally now. That lever is not going to fall out of place and jam things up. Because basically it was just swinging out and jamming in the body, catching under the bottom lip there and causing grief. So that little task is done. And the only thing left to do on this camera is to check the focus at the focus screen, make sure I've got that focusing correctly. I usually use an infinity target to do that on a ground glass screen. Once I'm happy I've got the focus set correctly, I'll put the focus scale ring in place, tighten that up, and uh, all should be good. Well, here's our name ring, of course, that sits in there, that's held in place by the focus scale ring. All right, well, I'll do that. I'll report back when it's done. I'm happy with that. Focus is good now. Everything's back together. I'm just about done with this camera. But I was looking at these marks on the camera back here. And at first I thought that was just some uh, something on there. Some brown substance that was causing that problem. But by inspecting it very closely with a powerful loop, I see that actually it's the surface of the leather that's scuffed up at those two places and it's exposing, it's cut through the black gloss finish and it's exposing the leather underneath. So I'm going to try treating that with a bit of uh, black polish and seeing if it'll improve that. This is just a uh, renovating polish intended for shoes most likely but it's full of pigment and I'm hoping to rub some of that black pigment into those microscopic divots in the uh, leather to improve the appearance at that point looks like it's going to do the job Well, I can certainly see where the shine's gone there, but the colours, the colour looks good. So I would say that's it for this uh, 
Perky02, and that can go back to its owner. Thanks for watching.